Hello all and welcome to the channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is John Webb, aka Gamekeeper John on YouTube. Now I've been in the game now for over 10 years and I thought I'd do a video and share some of my favourite pictures from over the last decade and tell you exactly what started me making catapults, what got me into them and how I got to where I am now. Well, catapults have always been a big part of my life. It's sort of a family tradition. My dad, my granddad, and so on. It's just, it's just I was brought up around them, so they've always been a part of my life. Uh, I started making them properly. Um, well, I'll explain the story. It would be easier that way. Well, around 13 years ago, I took a lads weekend trip up to North Wales with the lads and met a girl who is now my wife. Uh, and I decided to move up here, and when I moved up here at the time, didn't have a lot at all, didn't have nothing really, I was looking for work, partner was pregnant, and uh, I always made catapults, I've always been around them, so I started putting a few catapults on eBay, a few of my naturals and that, just to earn a bit of cash really, just while I was looking for work, even if it was just £10 here or £20 there, it was just to, to do something while I was looking. The naturals I would make would just be any naturals I could find up the woods, off fell trees and stuff. The workshop at the time, it was an old tyre pawlin from the pound shop. It was a two metre square tyre pawlin, which was um, cable tied onto the guttering above the kitchen and then cable tied onto the fence. And if it would rain, that's what I would get on that. Um, my tools was in a little cardboard box next to the fridge. I think I had a, a jigsaw, some sandpaper, a couple of rasps and a Stanley knife. And we used to put the naturals on eBay. Uh, at the time, there was literally no catapults on eBay. There was probably five listings at the top. There would be mine, and then probably one or two others. I think it was um, Hunter Catapults at the time. He was the only other one selling. It's probably the only other place you could get catapults from. It just wasn't mainstream then. There wasn't a lot to get. Um, the elastic we used to fit on them was old square elastic. The pouches we used to use, the leather pouches was old charity shop belts, what we used to buy second hand from the charity shop. We used to cut them into rectangles, drive a big nail through with the hammer and thread them on that way. When we used to make the bands, it was hilarious. So I used to have to get my partner to um, hold them out in front of her while I whipped the pouch on. It was just chaos, it was fun. It was, you know, it, it, was, it was good times looking back at it now. Well, how things have changed now. And this was at a time when the first ever shoots were starting to be set up. This was around 2012 now, and the likes of Skipman, Moodley, and Jumbo were setting the shoots up. I remember going to the first ever shoot, uh, didn't win a thing, didn't even come in the top half, I don't think. And I realised then, I thought I was a good shot when I went to the first shoot. I thought, oh, I'm alright here, I'll do well. And for the first two years of competing, I don't even think I ever come in the top 20. And uh, I was like, I want a bit of these trophies. I want to do what everybody else is doing, all the top shots. Um, so I started practicing. And I realized then, when I was learning how to aim, there was no other YouTube channels. There was no how to aim videos. So this is about the time I set up my YouTube and started doing what I thought was the way to aim. And then like just the simple things like a reference, an anchor point, nobody, nobody understood that. There was nothing. It was all self-taught. Like I remember when we used to draw a little black line on the um, catapult band as a little aiming reference or an aiming dimp. That was absolutely breaking news then. I was like, oh my God, there's a catapult with a sighting method on. It was just a bit of pen on the band or an aiming dimp. But that was like the first ever like people referring to them as sights on catapults. But anyway, I started shooting and shooting. And uh, to cut a long story short, I'm now the most decorated catapult shooter in the UK with 100 trophies and the only person in the UK to hit 100 trophies. And as I say, the business side of things just progressed and progressed from working underneath that pound shop tire pawling. I soon realised that I could, you know, provide and pay a few bills and that just escalated and escalated and now it's a completely family run business. It's our only household income, pays for the house, all the bills and gives us a a comfortable lifestyle we don't do without much put it that way and uh, for that I'll always be thankful for catapults from just mad how the way things happen moved up here with nothing looking for work and now making catapults is all we do is our family run business and I've had an amazing decade doing it like from no shoots happening flat bands wasn't even here you know the first sighting methods wasn't here um, 
the first YouTube channels, this, that, the other, just loads and loads of firsts, which we was involved in, the first ever forum, the old Shanghai forum, that there was just so many firsts that I've been involved with, and like, for anybody who's not been there from the start, you just, you wouldn't understand what it used to be like, only the true, true originals will understand, just so many firsts, um, but yeah, I've met so many people along the way, friends for life from probably 10 or 20 different countries, and for that, you know, catapults have literally paved the way for my life. Um, yeah, I won't be shooting anymore. I'm retired now. 100 trophies, that's me out. I do a lot more fishing these days. I spend too much time making catapults. I don't want to spend as much time shooting them. So that is the last decade of Gamekeeper John and where it started for me and where it is now. I hope you all enjoyed it.